The question is that the motion be agreed to. The Honourable Damien O'Connor. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and uh, it's indeed a pleasure to rise in the House and speak on the uh, biosecurity bill. Um, it's interesting that a recent KPMG report, um, a survey of all the key agribusiness leaders across the country, um, asking them you know, what were the issues ahead of them into the future, the number one issue that all of them identified was biosecurity. So it is important that whatever changes we make, we improve the system because this economy still relies on biological production for its wealth, and any threat to that is something that has to be taken seriously, Mr Speaker. This is a bill that has uh, been a development stage for uh, a long time, it goes right back to, in fact, uh, when Labor was in government. Um, we identified um, with the incursion of Varroa might a lack of planning and coordination between industry and government. And so the concept of a government industry agreement was developed then, and that has been carried forward into this bill. What does concern us, of course, is that the first budget that the incoming national government um, put in place cut $2 million off the biosecurity frontline budget. $2 million and 60, 58 to 60 frontline jobs. And we thought that was pretty dumb, I have to say, because the government put up the argument that, oh, well, um, we, were, we were facing a recession, imported goods were reducing. Um, in fact, you could say that uh, with the value of the dollar, there's been a fairly steady stream of imported goods coming into this country, in fact, far too many, at the same time the government had cut frontline border security. And they have relied on... 55, exactly. I think that, that we, there was some debate at the time as to how many would lose their jobs. And we had assurances from the, from the government that, oh, no, things were OK. You know, things are OK. We had less, less volume of goods. Well, in fact, the government has said for some time that the recession's over. In fact, the, the economy's on an upward trend. But we haven't heard of one more person being appointed to frontline border security services. And, in fact, since that time, we've had the Prime Minister, as Minister of Tourism, um, putting forward this smart gate uh, process between New Zealand and Australia. So people can just walk off the plane from Australia straight through, the, the theory being that there's been a risk assessment done while they're on the plane, they've even worked out whether their bags should be checked or not, and so people can walk straight into New Zealand. There have been major concerns in areas like um, uh, Tauranga, Bay of Plenty, where the new services into Rotorua could potentially bring a fruit fly straight into Rotorua, over the hill and into some of our key regions. Now, the fact that they're facing now another huge biosecurity risk through PSA does highlight the fragility of our economy. And the Bay of Plenty now is reeling under the, the threat and, in fact, the reality of PSA, and, and we're not quite sure how far that might go. Mr Speaker, to come back to the bill, the Minister has gone through um, and identified a number of key areas. I have to say, and I acknowledge the Chairman of the Select Committee, Shana Dern, um, who I've always said should be the Minister, um, I have to say that, that uh, he did a very good job and there was non-partisan analysis of this piece of legislation. And the one thing that we did agree on was that in too many cases, the legislation that came before us was very, very permissive. That is that, in my simple assessment, the trade boffins in MAF had ruled over the, the biosecurity boffins. And so we had to tidy up in a number of areas. The Minister acknowledged that changes were made by the Select Committee, and, and that's great. That's the way the process is supposed to work. My question, though, to the Minister and to his biosecurity boffins, why did they put before us a bill that, without amendment, would have seriously threatened biosecurity, frontline biosecurity in this country? We have made some adjustments and improved the bill, but my suspicion of the thinking behind it 
begs the question, how will they interpret, interpret this piece of legislation when it's implied? Because there's much left to interpretation, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker. So we come back to what is driving biosecurity thinking under the national government and under that minister? And I'd say it's a softly, softly, touchy-feely approach. They don't want to offend Australians because they want to let them in. You know, don't want to check their bags, don't want to ask them the hard questions. So they do some kind of risk assessment analysis on, on some computer screen. Um, we need the toughest, highest level of biosecurity of any country anywhere in the world because we rely on biological production for our well-being. Mr Speaker, if we got, God help us, foot and mouth, you know, we would be struggling as an economy for so long. We've already faced a very serious threat with PSA now in the kiwi food industry. Foot and mouth would be that times 10. Fruit fly would be that times five. And we have, in fact, identified a fruit fly larvae in this country. Who knows how it got in? We've identified <coughs> honey that hasn't been checked down right inside our economy, available to bees that might fly in and out, potentially a serious risk. We do not have the best frontline system in the world, and the minister and, and his officials say that as they go around the world. They say we've got a very high level, but in fact, if you identify the incursions that we have on a regular basis, you have to say that all's not well. And while it is impossible to have an absolute position, that is that nothing will come in, we have to try harder, Mr Speaker. In supporting the legislation into the House and voting for it at this particular time, the opposition flags that we will be continuing to talk with industry people to make sure that, that amendments, if necessary, can be put back into the House under committee stages and, and improvements made, because we don't believe this bill is as good as it should be. We don't believe that the government industry agreements, the GIAs, will in fact provide a fair go for small sectors of the primary industries that where, where their total gross export earnings is not huge, but has potential to grow. It might be for joas, <coughs> avocados, small perhaps at this point, but with the potential to really grow. And a risk assessment by Biosecurity New Zealand under this bill might deem them to be insignificant. And therefore, the obligation of government to step in and help fund an incursion might, might disappear. The government might walk away. We don't want that. We need to, to ensure that we have a robust system, Mr Speaker, and that Without changes, this bill would not have been robust. I think it is better, but it's still got some way to go. And we are in active consideration of the bill as reported back by the Select Committee, and we will be putting into this House some amendments where we think, in working with industry players, improvements can still be made. And one of them, in fact, um, said to me today, Mr Speaker, emailed and said, we would like to slow this down and anything you can do to hold it up would be great, because they still want to go through double and triple check. And if it takes longer to go through, I make no apologies for that. I don't think anyone on the Select Committee, I'm not sure within Biosecurity, and I'm not sure with the Minister, but I don't think anyone on the Select Committee would want to make a mistake with the legislation. And we know, and I'm not wanting to get into the technical details of what our outcomes, objectives, and, and who an importer is, all of these little things that we changed to make the system more robust, the question that came from that, the overarching question is, why did the officials put up such a limp piece of legislation in the first place? Why couldn't they see the dangers that each and every one of us on the Select Committee saw? And we made changes, and that is great. But maybe we missed something. And I, for one, do not want to be held responsible for passing a piece of legislation that leaves open the door to a major biosecurity incursion in this country, Mr Speaker. So in supporting the legislation at this point, the opposition flags 
our intention to investigate amendments that might improve the bill even further and, and lay at the feet of the government the challenge to put more money Sorry to into interrupt the honourable security. member. His time has expired.